Hey, everybody, and welcome to Right in Front of My Face, the podcast that talks about big things happening right in front of us. This week, we are breaking form a little bit because midwinter break is coming and life happened. There are some really exciting interviews coming up, though, so stick with me. But this episode is particularly special to me because I am bringing you, in my opinion, one of our most fun guests this time around. This person is literally right in front of my face every day, all day. Sometimes yelling, sometimes screaming, sometimes snuggly. We have my son, Luke, in the studio today. Luke, say hi. Hi. So Luke is going to talk to us a little bit today about what it's like to be uh, an eight-year-old. Because I think that's something we don't talk about very often. And Luke's got a pretty interesting perspective on things. So Luke, tell everybody how old you are. I'm eight years old. And what grade are you in? I am in second grade. And tell me about what a day at school is like for you. I like it. It's pretty fun. Well, that's a good thing. What happens the first thing you get to school? What do you do? Um, we take out our homework notebooks and we write our homework in that. Okay. And then you just go through your day. What are your favorite parts of your day? I like recess, lunch, and, um... Any subjects that you like? I like science. You've always liked science. Always. What do you like about science? Our science teacher is um, pretty nice. Well, that's important and in a teacher. Fun. Yeah. Do you get to do fun experiments? Yes. I missed one of the funnest ones because I was getting my braces on. Oh, well, that's kind of a bummer. Yeah. But I want to hear about I want to hear about recess. It seems like the recess is a little bit of a jungle. What is recess like? It's crazy. For 20 minutes at snack and 30 minutes at lunch. What happens at recess? Like, what's the first thing you do when you get outside? Run. You just run around like crazy? Yeah. Seems like all the kids are playing different games. What are the, what are like the main games kids play at recess? Jump rope, watermelon, and helicopter, which are all jump rope. Yeah, what about sharks and minnows? Um, they don't really play that that much anymore. Oh, we're over sharks and minnows? Yeah. Huh. That's well, kind of. Is that good or bad? Graders, for me, it's good. How come? Because I don't really play sharks and minnows. Yeah, so do you feel like you have more people to play with at recess now that you're not playing sharks and minnows yes. so much? Does anything happen when you play sharks and minnows? Like, does anybody make fun of you? Or is that a thing that happens on the playground? Do people make fun of each other? No, and mom, I've never played Sharks and Minnows. No, I was just wondering if anybody says anything to you about that. Like, do you feel pressure to play Sharks and Minnows or is it? No, not really. Oh, that's good. So people are pretty accepting of whatever anybody else wants to do. And I do not like video games. That is shocking information. Why don't you like video games? They're just not my favorite. Like, I like active ones. Like arms and just dance, but I don't really like, oh, and I also like Minecraft, but I don't really like the ones that, like Fortnite, I don't really like that type. Is it just because we don't play them at home, really, and so you don't know how to play them? Yeah, I don't really know how to play them. Do you think it would be different if you did know how to play them? Yes. So how do you feel at school? Do you feel like there's a lot of pressure to do really well at school, or do you think it's pretty chill? I think it's chill. So what do you like to do outside of school? Because you're, you're, you rock school pretty hard. You like it? Mm-hmm. What do you like to do outside of school? I like to do parkour. That's pretty awesome. Can you explain what parkour is to anybody that doesn't know? It's like gymnastics except not indoor and you can't use your knees. Oh, yeah, there are no knees in parkour, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So what else do you like? What else do you do outside school? Um, Rock climbing. Well, that's pretty awesome, too. Gymnastics. Love it. So you're not a ball. Magic class. Magic class. That's Yeah, that one's really fun. Yeah, that's pretty fun. 
So you're not a guy that loves ball sports. No. What about ball sports do you not love? Um, some of the coaches are kind of mean. Like at parkour, when I was indoor, there's this coach that was kind of mean for the basketball team. When you're oh oh like at prac at parkour practice, there was a coach you yes. were watching that was kind of mean. Yes. Yeah, and you didn't like that. Yeah. What about basketball last year? You played last year and you didn't want to play again. How come? It was just hard, and you know that girl kept switching wristbands and tried to trip me. (laughs) There was one very unruly girl last year. Yes, that is true. So do you feel that there is pressure to play ball sports like that? Yes. Yeah? How do you deal with that pressure? Uh, I don't do it. Are you okay? Like, do you feel confident not playing and doing, like, your own thing? Yeah. There's one other thing that you haven't mentioned that I know that you love outside school. It's every Wednesday night. Sandpoint? No. Every Wednesday night. What do you do with your dad? Oh, Cub Scouts. Cub Scouts. Talk to me about- It's every other Wednesday. Uh Uh-uh. It is every single Wednesday. Oh, yeah, because we have done meetings. Yeah. So tell me what you love about the Boy Scouts. We go on four camping trips a year. Yeah? Mm Mm-hmm. And you like the kids in your den? Yes. Tell me about the trip that you just came from this weekend. Oh, we did snow camping. Now, see, snow camping doesn't sound like it would be fun. What's fun about snow camping? We got to do a snow fort building competition. That's pretty fun, but you actually... And tubing. We got to do tubing. That's pretty awesome. At night. At night? At night. Wow. With helmets. <laughs> that sounds fun. Do you sleep in the snow? Some people sleep in tents. Other people sleep in the lodge. Okay. So what did you do? I slept outside. That is pretty tough. And also in the tent, we only had room for three sleeping mats, but four people were in the tent. Well, who shared a sleeping mat? Me and dad. Oh, that's nice. Is that how you stayed warm? Yeah. (laughs) You just cuddled up. Yeah. All right. So you feel confident not playing ball sports. That's not your thing? That's not my thing. Talk to me a little bit about your love of music. I want to be a DJ when I grow up. So I try to find good music and I... Have my own playlist that's literally called DJ Luke. What inspired you to want to become a DJ? I saw the person at Sam Point when we were in kindergarten. Oh, the DJ at the Mother Son? Yes. Okay. And that's what inspired you? Yes. What did you think was cool about that? Like that he had the turntable and he actually used it and he had... An app that literally listed every song in existence. Wow. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a lot of them. Probably a lot, a lot of, of ones that would get up and dance. Yeah. So you want to be a DJ when you grow up. What do you think you have to do to be a DJ? Definitely go to college. <laughs> Probably going to college would help yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. It would help to learn something about music. Yeah. What about special effects? You seem into special effects. Yes, definitely. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And then you you like theater, too, yeah? Yeah. You could see yourself doing that someday? Yeah, like the special effects for theater, yeah. What What's your favorite performance you've ever seen? That's really hard. I know. Um, Wicked. Oh, Wicked was so good, wasn't it? Yeah. I love so that So was one. Aladdin. I think Aladdin are Wicked. And Wicked are my two favorite. Yeah, those are really good ones. Those are very inspiring from a special effects perspective also. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The Cave of Wonders was... Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, super cool. So I could see you doing that someday too. I was too. speechless, pun intended. <laughs> I see what you did there. I like that. Luke's also an aspiring comedian. Talk to us about your um, magic class you're taking. It's really fun. What do you learn? Magic stuff. Not like what? I made my own trick that I was barfing scarves. 
except, a scarf barf? Yes, except I just stuffed them in my shirt and then pulled them out <laughs> while I opened my mouth. I like your custom scarf barf trick. Yeah. Available for hire at birthday parties. Yeah. What do you think your first job is going to be? I'm not sure. Yeah? Have you seen anybody do anything you thought you'd be into? Not really. All right. How are you going to earn money? Uh, by having a job. By having a job. So besides a DJ, you want to do anything else when you grow up? Someone who, like, programs the special effects. That's a, that's a good job. Yeah. That's a really, that's different. That's not what I thought you were going to say. What did you think I was going to say? I thought say? you were going to say molecular gastronomy. That's what I've heard you that's, say. That's another one. That's, that's another definitely one. definitely another one, and it's pronounced molecular. Wait, oh, did I pronounce it wrong? Am I, am I saying it right? Molecular gastronomy. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, you got it. What does a molecular gastronomist do, sir? They find out, like, science ways to make food like unique this um person named steve spengler he um made um these noodles except it was like gel with it was something green i don't know what it was it was not broccoli though like kale yeah i can't remember like what kale it was in it. but i know what one you're talking about yeah and he did ice cream with nitrogen, with liquid nitrogen. So cool. Yeah. I was going to say hydrogen, but that does the exact opposite. Yeah, that probably thing. wouldn't get the desired effect. So we're talking about a show called DIY Sci that Luke is a huge fan of. Yeah. It's a show all about how you can do science experiments at home. At home, but not explode ostrich eggs. No, I haven't let you do that yet. <laughs> yet. They said we couldn't do it. At How home. many eggs are in one ostrich egg? Do you remember? I think it's like 12. I think it's 12 too. All right. So this is a variety of things. What do you think is hard about being eight? Like what's the hardest thing about being an eight-year-old? Um, My little sister gets more attention. Your little sister gets more attention than you? That's the hardest part? Yes. Hmm. How does that make you feel? Not the best. Not the best. How do you feel about your family? I like it. Yeah. Well, we like you too. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to add? Uh, not really. Yeah. What's the best about being eight years old? I also don't know. Yeah. Oh, wait. Getting to go to like musicals because my sister's only been to one. In Arizona. And you've, you've been, you like going to musicals because you're old enough to go now? Yes. Um, that's cool. So what else do we need to know about Luke? What's going on in that head that we need to know about? Nothing really. Nothing really? Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, Luke, thank you for taking the time tonight to come and talk to me. I would like to leave, I would like to leave the audience with one really solid joke because you're a really good joke teller. Yeah. Okay. Okay, can you think of one? I'm putting you on the spot, kind of. Um, oh, I got one. Okay. What do you call two birds when they fall in love and stick together? What? Velcros. Ah, <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right, Lugie, thank you for leaving us with a laugh. Thank you for sharing a little bit with us a glimpse into the deep recesses of the mind of an eight-year-old. Nicely done. I learned something today. I had no idea Luke wanted to be a molecular gastronomist. So that was a new one for me also. Thank you so much for listening and sticking with me in this little break of format. It was pretty fun. We should be back on schedule the next couple weeks. I have some really exciting things brewing that I'm very excited to share with you. So stick with me. If you would like to help this podcast, the single best thing that you can do is to share it. Tweet about it. Post it on your Facebook page. Post it on your Instagram if you think people would be interested. I am trying to find ears for these wonderful stories. So any help that you could offer would be greatly appreciated. I am at in front of my face on Twitter, right in front of my face on Instagram and Facebook. And my email address is in front of my face at gmail.com. Please don't hesitate to reach out. 
In the meantime, I hope everybody goes into March strong and as always takes a couple of extra minutes to ask some deeper questions to the people around you because you truly will be surprised when you see what's right in front of your face.